Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to start a project with our antler that uh, my buddy Danny from over at TN Deer Stalker Outdoors sent me. Um, and just a quick little blurb on antlers. So antlers are not horns. Antlers are actually made of bone. Um, deer, moose, elk, they grow antlers and they fall off, they shed them every year and then they grow them back. Um, horns uh, are made of keratin and which is basically like your fingernail or modified hairs and they don't fall off all right so like a cow um, there is one that I know of uh, the pronghorn antelope that will shed their horns um, they shake their head like crazy it's pretty wild to see it until it comes flying off and then they regrow another one but generally horns don't fall off antlers do so our first project is going to be a whistle and I'm going to cut this tine off. I'm just going to do it with a hacksaw. Won't bore you watching that and then I'll bring you back when that's done. All right, so we have it cut off. If you see inside right there, that little circle-ish area there, so that's like the pith, sort of. I, I don't know, I'm not sure if that's what you call it, but uh, that's where we're going to drill our hole. So we'll probably come in about Mm, maybe so you want to go straight so I'm gonna say probably about maybe that far I'll give you the measurements as we go you can make this as long or as short as you want I think it's nice to have a little bit of a handle on it like that so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grind this down so we have a nice flat surface so I'll bring you over to the grinder and I'll show you how I do that all right so I'm over at my uh, belt sander. Make sure you wear a dusk mask when you do this. All right, back over to the table. All right, so I just drew two lines. So I want to try to get um, I, if you drill, let's say I had it like this, and I drilled straight down, I would come out over here. We don't want that. So we want to make sure we get down into the meat of it and not pop out the side. So I got two reference lines, and now I, I need to make some kind of jig to hold this while I drill it. So um, I'm going to see what I can come up with, and then I'll show you what that is, and then we'll get on to the drilling. All right, so I realized I was overthinking this making the jig and all of that nonsense. I, I was going to carve out, and I'm like, you know what? That's way too much work for drilling a simple hole. So I just clamped it to a piece of wood. I'll hold this on the drill press, and we'll drill it out. If it don't work, I'll do it by hand with a hand drill. So let's get over there and uh, drill this out. All right. I know the lighting is terrible in here, but let's see what we can do. All right, that worked out great. So I'll just enlarge that and I'll bring you back. All right, part in the messy bench. This is what my bench looks like after I do a project and then I clean it up. <laughs> All right, so I got the hole drilled. Uh, I believe it's... So it's a 1964. 1964 was the size I ended up with. Um, so now I'm just gonna put a line here and I'm going to put a little uh, saw cut in here, and I'll show you that. And then we're going to make our 45-degree uh, angle for the air to escape. So let me set this up. All right, so I'm just going to use plain old hacksaw. Now all these cuts could be re, you know, reshaped uh, if you don't like the way it sounds. Whoa. So now to make the bevel, 
which should be around 45 degrees. I like to just use a file. All right, so you get the idea. I'll bring you back when I'm done with that. All right, so if you may notice, there's two pieces. I didn't like the proportions of it. It was just too long. Um, and I didn't like where I put this slot and I made it too big. Probably wanted it about a half an inch back, but uh, I did cut it down. I did the same thing. I did drill the hole and use my file to make the slot. So I like the proportions of this one much, much better. So next thing we need to do is make a plug for the back. And this brow tine fits perfectly. So I'm just gonna cut this off with a hacksaw and then I'll bring you back and we'll finish this up. All right, so I have it cut. I left it extra long in case I mess it up. So the next thing we want to do is kind of wiggle it until we got the right spot. That looks good. Now I'm going to reach in here with a pencil. I'm just going to draw a line. And I'm going to cut that off. I'll bring you back when that's done. Alright, so I have it trimmed off. You don't want it to come past that uh, initial cut there. Now I want to put a flat on it. And I'm just going to use a little needle file. This is trial and error. Keep going. Um, don't go too, too much. Go crazy because you can't put it back. There's already a natural flatness there. If you could see that. There you go. Works. All right. I'll continue uh, refining that and then I'll bring you back. All right. So refine that a little bit more. We want a nice tight fit. We don't want to use any adhesives or any epoxy or anything. So hopefully you can see that space down there. You got to fiddle around with it a little bit, get it to where you want it before you press it in the whole way. Oh, looking good. So now I'm going to trim this off a little bit further down. And I'll bring you back when I get to that point. All right, so we have that little plug cleaned up. Fits nice. You want to line up that flat part with that hole. Give it a whirl. Works good. Next is we're just going to trim off this excess here with a hacksaw and then a Dremel tool to clean it up and I'll show you what that looks like with the Dremel tool. Oh boy, it's brutally hot out today. Oh, where did I even put it? Here it is. A cup of coffee. I still drink coffee, hot coffee on hot days. Don't ask me why, but I got to have a cup in the morning and the afternoon. So, uh, cheers. Now I have that trimmed off, I'm just going to take the Dremel tool and clean it up. Oh, hopefully that's showing up. Woo, yeah, it works good. All right. Let me get my mug in the picture so you can see me actually using this and no one says, oh, you're using a different whistle. You're not showing that one working. <laughs> All right, folks. Here she is. Man, that's loud. That's the loudest whistle I ever made. All right, let me bring you back to the table and we'll wrap this one up. All right, folks. Well, there you go. Deer antler whistle. Now you can get as fancy as you want with this. You you could start putting some file grooves in here, or or etch it with your Dremel, and um, you could polish it all up and 
You could put a lanyard hole in it and hang it from your neck. But I'll tell you what, I like it just the way it is. It's very easily just slip in my pocket. And I know I'll have some kind of uh, signaling device with me while I'm out and about. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And again, Danny, thank you so much for the antlers. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I have a, a playlist for items I make out of deer antlers. Um, this will be the third thing going into it. I have a deer antler buttons and a deer antler measuring spoon. And as I make other um, crafts out of the deer antlers, I'll put them in there. And I'll have the link in the description below. So thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate your views. I appreciate all your comments. I hope you all are having a great, great day. And um, we'll see you in the next one.